This wasn't going to be my first video of my Rivian, but uh, we're going to start here. I'll do another follow-up video uh, on the purchasing process and how that went. Quite seamless. A little uh, update quick. All right, so I've got uh, some truck bed protector stuff. I'll do a video on accessories to, to show you what I got. One of the first things you do, though, is you open the app and you go in here and you can actually tell if it's sleeping. There it is. She's sleeping. And I should be sleeping as well, but I'm too excited. So I'm going to scroll through some of the features you'll find here. I did do a full charge the other day. We'll scroll down. You can see the, it shows you the cabin temperature. Currently uh, fully charged at 100%. Gear guard. That's kind of a cool feature. You do need the uh, hard drive, and I'll show you how that feature works here in a minute. There you can see it's 259 miles, which is exactly what it's supposed to be. So software, everything, hardware is lining up nicely. Okay, this is a cool feature. Most cars don't have this. So what you can do is with the gear guard, it will show you the live stream camera angles, which is very nice. And also if you do the annual subscription or monthly subscription, I think I would do the annual, it's like 149, it's basically 150. It will let you see camera angles. It comes with unlimited data. It's quite nice. So now, right now I have, I didn't have the lights on there. I just turned the lights on. Now you'll be able to see in the garage. You, you have a total, you have access to a total of five of the cameras. One is the license plate view, which is what you're seeing now. There's the truck bed view. And the through the app right here, the quality is not that great, but in the car, it's way better. So this is a lot, obviously for broadcasting purposes, it's not gonna give you the high def, you know, et cetera, but it's good enough. And this does allow you to kind of see what's going on around your vehicle. Now what's recorded locally is gonna be, I, I would imagine in high def, I don't know, cause it's too new, but these are the various angles. So you have the front view, I switch again and you'll see, yep, there I am. There's the other view. You can see the garage is a mess. I'm not happy with this. And that's why I'm working on this project to clean up my garage, get rid of some stuff. Let's go to the other view. There's the charger. And I'm building, um, this is the beginning of the structure that I'm going to build all in the front. And there are the skis. And I definitely hope to take this up to Big Bear so we can see it. But yeah, so this is the Rivian, and then here is back to the sky, the span. That's the only, oh, there we go. Uh, the only thing, let me, let me flip the camera around. All right, so as you know, with the Rivian, the charging port is this guy over here. I don't know if it'll do, it's not awake. Uh, yeah, it's not awake, I gotta wake it up. So charging port's there, and one thing I noticed, and span does this, and I don't know why, or they should at least give options, they have it to where, here, let's just do it. They have it to where this plug, careful, easy. All right. I mean, they give you a long cord. It's, it's definitely a thick cord, but um, yeah, so this goes here. I mean, that's just a docking. It's not like there's any electrical components. That's a bunch of noises. Uh, there aren't any electrical comp components in it. It's, it's literally just a dumb dock, right? If you want to say that. So that keeps it held in there. But think about it. If you have kind of narrow, you know, everybody's garage is kind of narrow and you open the door and then depending on where you park, this is kind of in the way. So what I'm doing is on Amazon and I'll leave a link in the video who doesn't do that. And then uh, I'm actually going to, you can buy a fake, or not a fake, it's a real dock, but it does the same thing. It doesn't do anything. I'm going to have it over here. So next to the skis, I guess that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is uh, have it to where it kind of plugs into the wall here, I believe. Maybe I'll have it over here. I don't know, but we have options. This is kind of nice. Uh, so yeah. 
with a lot of this technology, you have hardware, hardware, and software that controls it. Span has an issue currently with the Rivian, and I opened a ticket because it's not sensing on the app it's not showing any wattage. So it's almost like it's free to charge, which I totally know it's not free to charge. <laughs> so I reached out, opened a ticket. They were very responsive and they're looking into it. So that's a thing. Then we're going to, we're going to go in here. Um, now people were, people were talking about, this is a gen two. It makes these noises uh, when it wakes up. Yes. And now it's going back to sleep. I think, I don't know, but this one is um, not a, it's with from what they're telling me it's just a servo where you you do that and it kind of activates it so once asleep there's a bit of a lag but that doesn't bother me at all so let's jump in oh my gosh i realized i had socks and sandals i apologize i don't usually roll like that um but yeah so here it is and i still have the um temporary film protection which they have on there because I, I just i have not had a chance i work from home and i have the privilege of working from home and here it is so it woke up and let's get into the battery stuff here we go 63 degrees i want to check the psi because i don't know what it's supposed to be uh, that's on the door jam usually it was last updated on the 12th of november and we're pointing in that direction. Do, 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 do. Elevation. Apple Valley is almost at 3,000 feet. That's kind of cool. I like that there's so much information. So that, and then you have this. And this is really cool. I love the way they've animated this guy. And now with my trifocals, I can see everything uh, perfectly. And that is really cool. Just depends on where I want to stare. And yeah, very happy with that. So... Anyone uh, getting up there may want to look into that. So then you've got all these other features, which is nice. But now, where was the battery percentage listed? There's still so much new. It's funny because it shows what looks to be a full battery. So, I, so far, haven't had any loss. Let's see if I can find out where that is. The charging menu. Oh, there we go. So I'm still at 100%. Now, I don't know if that's done with software or what, but I did back it up a couple times after it was at full, but I mean, I am I have no loss in battery over the span of about, I think it was a full day. Yeah, it's been over 24 hours and no change whatsoever. So no phantom drain as people talk about. So that's great. I haven't even had a chance to detail anything in the car. There are fingerprints. No. Um, one thing, too, that people don't talk about. So currently, I'm in right height of low, right? I don't know if you can see that because I'm doing the other camera. Right height of low. So uh, we have decent clearance in the, you know, back. I mean, I've got, I think, what, it, you know, could be considered the average height of a garage. It's an eight-foot, this is an eight-foot ceiling. Those are eight-foot um two two by fours they're obviously a little shorter but you know generally speaking so I, I haven't had to cut those at all so i have an eight foot ceiling but of course <clears throat> you have to delete about a foot or so let's go back out there you have to delete about a foot or so right and then of course when the door is open it's still there's maybe a little bit hanging there so one thing I'm curious about is when it's at right height, you just, you want to pay attention. I think that's the thing. And I want to measure it just in case I actually were to roll in at full height. I don't know what that would be like, but that's a pretty tall fin. I didn't even realize. So right now it's right height, low ist. And then you have that guy. Okay. So I still have plenty of room. I'll have to measure this all later. So you guys aren't just imagining it, but I'm curious is like it, it hot, the highest, do I have to be concerned that I'm going to be, cause man, that, that sounds expensive. You, you would not want to, you would not want to do that. Um, that would be a bad day. And then over here, I haven't even been in the back seat to be honest. <clears throat> oh, wow. 
That's nice. It's comfortable. It has a really new car smell. So nice. Here's from the back seat. And I love that um, even though this isn't the, the four motor, it's just a dual standard. Um, I do like the yellow, Rivian yellow here. And, uh, oh, interesting. I was wondering about that. These are vertical, not horizontal. So that's good to know because I did buy... Let me just show you <clears throat> what I've done. Hello, back screen. Oh, yeah. And the, that, there's a lip here. So, all right, let me show you what I bought. So I think I'm going to have to return a few because I, I don't think I need them. Here, this is an add-on. It's an L-shaped. It turns any, like there, um, that is a horizontal uh, flat port access with nothing in the way. There's an L-shape that allows you to because I um, kind of bend it the other way. So that way, if you set something down there, it's not in the way. I also want to install that a little bit better because you can see this cable, like it, it can be moved around a bit. So for gear guard, um, yeah. So I'll have to install that later. Um, in any of it, yeah. So that's something I want to come up with a better system. I'll leave the link on that thing. And I, I like the L-shaped guy. But clearly, I have to come up with a better solution because I'm really kind of paranoid about that getting messed up. Well, That's so cool, though. And then, yeah, these kind of can come down independently. And there you go. Um, then you have this back here. Look at the look at the design. I mean, that's just so cool. This like aluminum or metal. I don't even know what's in here. No, nothing. Oh wow, it's like a plastic. This is like a plastic feel. It's just. I don't know what you, papers? I don't know, what you, an iPad. You could put various things, I guess, in there. So, really nice. Just very comfortable. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, here, I was just sitting there. You can see, they've definitely made it softer. Then there's this guy. This has always intrigued me. Like, they put a, uh, another type of compartment here. And I just don't understand. I mean, what would you would you put there so it's kind of cool though cup holders and then of course the secret into the into the gear tunnel so cool just very well thought out you know it's funny this is a um i mean you could almost say rivian started as a uh like an electric software battery you know focused uh company but I'm just so impressed with the fit and finish. It feels so stable and secure. Let's see, I haven't even tried to lift these up. I saw one video of somebody's like, hey, uh, these weren't coming up or weren't staying on. I don't know which, but here, let's try to, let's pause. All right, I didn't even know how to manipulate these, but so you can see they, they show up like that. There are two buttons on either side here. This one and that one. Interesting. So, and you can you can lift it up, but it locks in place there. Very interesting. So that one here on the left is different than the one on the right. But yeah, and then you <clears throat> can lock it back in place. But to get to it, man, you really got to jam up in there. I don't think I would ever move those, but I'll try that one next to make sure everything's good to go. Yeah, this one's good too. But yeah, um, I know it's kind of dark. But there, they're on the same side. So on the left, you have the pushy button, and this is like an inserty button. And uh, that's a little, this one's a little more wobbly. Interesting. And then it goes up. I don't know how probably comes off, but oh yeah, you can see where there's a a lock cut in there. I mean a little latch which locks it right there, that indentation. So yeah, but this one I must say it feels a little wobbly. I don't know how often I would use that compared to this one. Uh if I release it. There's the one side, there's the other. Can't do it with one hand. Oh, I see. They're both kind of like that. I mean, 
the funny part is that the distance of these is not super long. But I, again, I don't think you would, if you had somebody really tall, I mean, I guess it's good to have something, but yeah, there. This is really hard to do with one hand. But hold, please. So depending on somebody's comfort level, maybe they want it, you know, a little higher, but it starts to get wobbly there. I mean, there. That's probably decent. But again, you know, I think it's more just aesthetic. I don't think it's really meant for major support. And then, of course, you have... Okay, it does that weird noise. I don't know what that is. When it goes to sleepy mode. I never noticed that. There's this kind of this back thing. I don't know if that's a quality issue or what is that? Huh. These are anchor port, uh, points. I don't know if these seats fold down. Uh, it doesn't appear to be. I think these are locked in. That's kind of what the back looks like here. Just doing a discovery video here so you can discover with me. Okay, we'll continue the discovery. So here, back, and we're gonna pop the latch. This is another thing that I was like, huh, and this is why I'm cleaning up the garage. So again, it's nice I have this extended garage, so that is actually quite nice, but I was a little nervous because before I had more things at the front and not as much in the back. I'm like, well, that's not a big deal because you have room, but the problem you'll see is if through the app or somebody comes along and they push this button, this is what happens. Okay, it's a cool feature, not a cool feature when you're in your garage, because look, that is a sharp metal and yes, a bit dirty um, bracket or hinge on the door that this thing for sure, if, uh, sorry, this thing for sure, if, if I were just parked more here, it would just go, ee! that's not good. So then I like, okay, I need to clean up the front. So that's why I'm doing that. Ooh, the lights, I like that. And then you pick this, this door is heavy. Nobody talks about the heaviness of that door. There, it's shut. That was one of my concerns. One thing I did uh, tell the, the Rivian guys when they reached out to me, I said, hey, you have sensors. You should actually, when, I, when someone pushes the button, it should wake the computer up if it's not up, and it should say, hey, is it clear? Is there any reason why this should not or should be deployed? There's that noise again. And so he liked the idea. So I don't know if he's going to put it in the, uh, the uh, inbox uh, for the developers to work on or not, um, but I submitted, I like the idea. And they have a front parking sensor, so as you pull up, the camera turns on. Just check and make sure, like don't, because if your kids or somebody gets a hold of your phone, they start pushing buttons. I could see that being a problem. It's going to wham, bam. And then you'll really mess up your beautiful paint. That would be sad. Okay, here's my Conotover powered because I'm lazy. I just didn't want to do that. One thing I didn't realize is here it's a step down, step down, step down, step down, step down, step down, step down. So that's kind of cool. Oh, yeah, these are cool too. These are like air like air fins, you like that. And then you have the upper one. Let's push the button and see what happens. Now you'll hear how loud or um, however you want to say it, sound it is, push. Maybe you have to push twice, because an accidental touch. So yes, you do hear it, but it's not a huge problem. Let's uh, continue, Let go back to opening this, go back to the discovery. I I could access the utility panel a bit better, but I can't. One thing I noticed, um, I think they fixed, like this goes to this point, but then it kind of um, is firm. It's like a little plastic thingy. It feels like you're breaking it a little bit, but you're not. There's the utility panel and uh, these are the, I think it's a gear guard thing where you can lock things in and you can set the uh, PSI. I need to read up on even how to use this thing. 
But yeah, I did notice that. They have it more locking, like here it's more locked in place, there, and you'll you hear it. So it's not just, it's a little bit flippy around. It's a little strange, but it is better than what I'd expect. Oh, that's interesting. What's going on here? Oh, weird. So I've got one loose thing here, and then I've got nothing over there. That doesn't seem right. I'll have to open a ticket for that. That's really strange. Yeah. Odd. Oh yeah, there's one here. Here. Yeah, they should all have covers. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, interesting. That's one thing I didn't realize. So everything has the covers up those bolts, except I'm missing three over there. And what is that? Oh, it's one of the uh, tie downs. <laughs> tie downs there. So I did not see that. Didn't even think about that. I didn't even read on anybody talking about it. But yeah, that is missing. But so far, they've been good about the tickets. So I will uh, do that now and get that submitted. Okay, you know the missing caps. I opened a ticket and then I, I called support because it wouldn't let me pick the same time that I had scheduled. One thing I love about Rivian so far, the customer service has been incredible. Somebody answered the phone straight away. They're like, oh yeah, sure, we can add that to your existing appointment. And so that's locked in and they're just caps. They just need to uh, tight, tighten the one and then add the other caps they were just missing. And uh, that was just one item I didn't even think to, to even look at. So generally speaking, that's about it. They're gonna look at the caps. So again, I'm just doing like a quick walkthrough of things that I've noticed since I got it home. Um, those three caps were the issue. That's issue one. Issue two, man, how do I, there we go. It had to wake up. I see what they're saying. Issue two is, the speaker system, these speakers above both headrests, there's one there and one on the driver's side, they, no audio is coming out of them at all. And I've done a hard reset, a soft reset. There's just no, nothing. And to me, I think it's that high range that's kind of missing on the speakers. And so open a ticket, that hasn't fixed it. So not a big deal, but we'll get that solved. So yes. Got that, got the speakers. Uh, oh yeah, up here, I don't know if anybody else has had this or this was part of the install process, but up here, you'll see like a crease or indentation on the wings, or sp spoiler, uh, this rear spoiler. It's in both places, exactly the same place. So I don't know if it was in the manufacturing process where they, this thing's like stamping it down. I have no idea how that's even attached but that is something where it's on both sides. So that's the one side walk through over here. And this is on the other, you can maybe see this one better. That's the other side, not a big deal. I'm never even gonna see it, but it's, it's like, if you just know that it's not quite right, you're like, you don't want that to be the case. And it's a lease vehicle right now, unless we decide to buy it eventually. So I just wanna make sure it's not on me and that's been documented. So we got, there's that sound again. So we got that one, so it's one, two, three, and the last item, odd, now this is interesting. What, what you'll notice is on camera, it'll look brighter, but in person, it's not. And that's the last item, but that's really tiny little things. Okay, so here, we're sitting in the car, there it is. Okay, that's the ambient lighting. It just is dim. It doesn't, it's maybe a little better there, but just generally I would prefer that it get brighter. Like I've seen Mercedes and I've seen some of the others. It just doesn't look as bright. And I know it's gonna look way brighter on camera and that's maybe nitpicky, but that's really the only other thing. Other than that, that those were the only items that I had going on and I'll leave you with one last one that I did have which is more mechanical and that one was like oh no maybe a little more concerning that was the suspension I it when I first brought it home 
parked it, everything was great. The next day backing it up, it gave me this weird suspension, check suspension, service soon, and reducing the speed. And then I did a soft reset, that didn't do it. I called Rivian, they said do a hard reset, which is the hazard light and the button. Again, it's a software and a hardware vehicle, it's both. And then it went away. And then two days later, I back it up, working on my project, then I pull it, uh, as I'm backing it up, same problem. Through an error, I called again, and they're like, okay, we're now we're really gonna take a closer look, do a reset. It was, uh, again, fine afterwards. I have not had the problem since. Again, I haven't even had this a week yet, but let's see. That's the only thing, from what I understand, some of the blogs I read, there are sensors underneath. I don't think I can show you but under there somewhere, related to the suspension, um, I don't know, it's it's back there, trust me. That maybe the plugs aren't fully seated, I don't know, but, and I, went, I did go under there and check and it seemed totally fine with me, but I haven't had the problem since. Now again, that's kind of the fun thing when you get these types of vehicles, it's like your Teslas or Rivian's, they're not adverse to software updates. Your the Jeep, oh my gosh, Uconnect. Has anyone had Uconnect? That is a nightmare. I couldn't even get the dealer to fix it. They're just not even interested in wasting their time. So that was a, a huge snafu. Uconnect is horrible. And the updates are horrible. Wow, sorry to make this negative, but yeah, that's the upshot to this. You're occasionally like, they're gonna roll out software. Anybody who has dealt with software, Anytime there are new releases, you're gonna fix some things and you're probably gonna break some things. You try not to, you do regression testing, all that good stuff, but it happens in every industry. So I'm expecting that and I'm okay with that. I know it's an expensive vehicle, but I'm gonna give them that that leeway to, to make it happen and make it better and make it fun. I mean, that's I just didn't want a boring old typical car. This is not that. And it's functional, first truck I've ever owned. And there you go. That's my walkthrough, first walkthrough on the vehicle. If you subscribe, I will show you what it's like to own this thing. I will also uh, do some of the little parts that I did purchase, truck bed, liner, some things like that that other people have done. But I will, uh, I'll show you all the ones and some that people have not done. So I will put those in there as well. So do look for that, it's so cool. Very happy. It's that honeymoon phase though, right? Just so cool. All right, I'll leave you with that. Little uh, shot of the old camera. By the way, driving at night, I'll have to show you that is so cool. The uh, intelligent lights, the way that just, you know, it just shows you everything. And then it will, it will auto dim when something's in the way. It's just, it works so cool. Y'all have a great weekend. Mm -hmm.